Usually, we are in and around Sweden, visiting those glorious locations where Abba was, walking in their footsteps. We've been to Stockholm, we've been to London for the most recent gift, and now we're going to Berlin in Germany. Abba played two concerts there in 1974 and 1977, but even more so, Agneta was living there for some time in the late 60s. During that time, she recorded many songs in German and she was also visiting a very special discotheque. Today, I want to see where all of these places are, and being in Berlin, we are also going to pay tribute to the legendary David Bowie. Before we properly begin our journey, we have to start here. This is one of the first things you see when you leave the train station. This is one of the most iconic places in Berlin, because this is where Frida and Björn were together 15 years ago in 2007, when Mamma Mia! the musical opened in Berlin. You could see this building in the background. They were standing in the middle of this meadow, in front of this building. Well, of course, this place is iconic, not necessarily because half of ABBA was here, but more because it is the building in which all the politicians gather and talk for days and days, as Björn would say. What you see right over there, this is the town hall where all the politicians gather and talk for days and days. And if you're wondering why the meadow is so empty now, they close it down because all of those ABBA fans were pilgrimaging here to step on the grass and walk in the footsteps of Frida and Björn. Or maybe they closed it down because there is going to be a demonstration later today. Not too far from here, Björn and Frida could also be seen walking in front of another landmark of Berlin. They were coming from this side of the gate. You can recognize these buildings to the right. I can't believe that it has been 15 years that they were here. I do remember it well because there were some great TV reports on the internet. And now it's time to go where Agneta once was. Let's visit the place where she recorded all of her German songs, the Hansa Studios. This recording studio is very famous for another reason. This is the street where you can find the studio. This is where Agneta went to record 16 songs in German between 1968 and 1972. Those songs were produced by Dieter Zimmermann, with whom she was also engaged. She was living in Berlin for some time and apparently also had quite a few apartments. Unfortunately, we don't have many information on this period and I have no idea where these apartments were where she and Dieter Zimmermann lived together. If someone knows anything about this, please let us know in the comments below. What we certainly know is that this is the building in which Agneta recorded those German songs, the Hansa Studios. A look inside the entrance area. This is where she came and went. But there were also many other artists recording here. Bonnie M recorded all of their albums here, including Night Flight to Venus from 1978. This album, in my opinion, is one of the best pop albums ever. Maybe we can talk about this specific album someday. But of course, there is only one artist who was here who is decorating the windows of the studio today. And unfortunately, it is not Agnetta. David Bowie recorded some of his most celebrated songs and albums here, Heroes and Low. These albums were part of the so-called Berlin Trilogy. He wrote and recorded one of his most iconic songs at this place, the song Heroes. This recording studio is known for its outstanding acoustics, and for Bowie, this period in Berlin turned out to be one of his most creative and prolific. And being here in Berlin, 
we have to take a look at the house in which Bowie used to live between 1976 and 1978. There is a memorial plaque on the walls. As far as I know, his apartment was very sporadically furnished. He was really only sleeping there for a few hours at night or even in the morning hours. He was living in the first floor to the left. This is the entrance area where he came and went. And here is a final look at the surroundings where David Bowie once was. What happens to music when it leaves the studio? It is played in discotheques and it gets promoted. Let's take the Berlin subway. I want to go to another place where Agneta once was. So this is the address, this is the street in which Agneta visited a discotheque in 1969. She took photographs for her second German single here. That discotheque was called Cheetah. It was a futuristic place with a very distinguished entrance area, which you can see on these old photographs. You enter this space through a tunnel like a cave, and the architecture inside was equally fascinating with several levels and platforms complemented by futuristic furniture. And this furniture is what you can recognize on these photographs with Agneta. If anyone watching was actually inside this discotheque at one point, please let us know in the comments below, because those memories are all we got. This place closed down a long time ago, but we have the address, and I also found this photograph from 2010 showing what is left. So I was really intrigued to go there to see this iconic entrance area. And look at what we got. Nothing reminds us that this is where the cheetah once was. Today there is a restaurant and apartments. But this is the place. We know that because the disco was located across a place called Neue Welt. And when we turn around we can see that building over there. And when we turn back we are at number 13. It's always fascinating for me to see locations then and now, and sometimes it's even more intriguing if almost nothing looks the same. We can also recognize this three-shaped silver door next to the entrance area of the apartment building. I know this is not the most obvious other related location that you could visit, it's quite strange to be honest, but Agneta was here when she was in Berlin and it gets us a little closer to that period in her life from which we don't have too many information. One month later, in March 1969, she performed her next German single here in Berlin on one of the biggest shows on German TV from that year. Apparently, this performance is still slumbering in the archives and it's a shame that we have never seen it so far. She did a few more TV appearances with her German songs. None of them are available for us to see. And there were even plans for Agneta to do a concert tour through Germany. However, 
The relationship with Dieter Zimmermann didn't last and her German recordings were never really successful. I have to say that I really love those songs, especially the tender ballads. And even Agneta herself said in an interview in 2013 that she found those songs not bad. For our final stop, we are going back to 1974. Imagine it's the 22nd of November, probably a chilly day, and we are going to see ABBA live in concert. This was the venue for that concert in Berlin on their very first European tour. Apart from Scandinavia, they actually played most of their concerts from that tour in Germany, with no less than seven shows. But none of them were sold out. ABBA was a fairly new group to the international market. They had just released two albums and just had their breakthrough with Waterloo seven months earlier. I wonder if anyone watching was standing here for this concert in 1974. There's no meaning to go any further. ABBA are not here today. In 1977, they returned to Berlin and this time they played on a location which is a bit far off and which does not exist any longer. That concert was completely sold out. ABBA had become successful in unbelievable proportions and we're still celebrating them. This was a beautiful trip to Berlin for me. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of this fascinating chapter in Agneta's life, what you know about it, and which of her German songs are your favorites. Have you been to one of Abba's Berlin concerts? Or whatever else you want to share, let me know in the comments below. Alright, until then, hey do! Thank you.